Have you ever put a website or sales page together? Heck, even created a new service or program. Put your best show on in terms of visible value you put out into the world. And then at the point of making your offer, you get little engagement and no sales whatsoever. Well, that's what we're tackling in this episode. How to avoid doing that. Packaging irresistible offers. And if you're scratching your head how to leverage your expertise through new products or programs, stay tuned. Welcome to the Leverage Business Podcast, where we believe business success is about working smarter, not harder. Leveraging your time and expertise in ways that fit the digital age you and your clients live in today. I'm your host, Jay Allison, author of Leverage Consulting in the Digital Age and founder of the iSuccess Business Academy. And every week I'll be sharing insights into how you can apply the power of leverage to grow your consulting, coaching or other expert services business and create true freedom and independent success with mindset, marketing and money model breakthroughs. Because when you get leveraged, the sky's the limit. Let's go for it. Hello, hello, welcome back. And today we're on the second part of this mini, mini series on the real truth about leveraging business, which is about leveraging your value proposition. Last week in the first part, we talked about creating visible value in terms of your positioning in the marketplace. And today we'll dive into how to package irresistible offers that deliver tangible results to your target market. And the two parts must be aligned, visible value and an irresistible offer. And that's what we call a packaged program. Being able to charge premium prices, whether it's your services, a group program or a course, it isn't just about cost. It's about the perceived value for money in the eyes of your customer. Just as a recap, let's go over aligning your offer with a value proposition. The central premise of creating visible value is that you woo your prospective clients with relevant and helpful content before attempting to sell them on your high-end offer. If they enjoy and feel they're getting value from your initial encounters and low price material, things may get a little bit more serious and they become willing to spend more time and money with you. If you're a service provider, you're trading your personal time, knowledge and skills for money, usually on an hourly, daily or project basis. Or you're on a monthly retainer, or maybe you have a six-step program where you deliver the solution as a project. In packaging irresistible offers, we've got to get the messaging right about the result your client wants. And you have to get the delivery vehicle right, the mechanism if you like. People don't purchase products primarily for their features or functions. In fact, function is simply a means to deliver what a customer really wants, which is the benefit. And that's where the value lies in what you offer, what you do, what you deliver to your customer or client. It's the benefit. In all or any of these cases, in order to deliver good value to your clients and maintain premium profitability for you, you must know how to plan, price, prioritize, package, promote, schedule and leverage your expertise for maximum efficiency. An irresistible offer speaks to how well what you do resonates with your target market more so than the quality of what you do, your professionalism, your methodology, your policies, guarantees, customer support, and so forth. Those are all added bonuses, but they really aren't at the heart of what makes a customer buy. Last week in the first part, we talked about creating visible value in terms of your positioning in the marketplace. And today in part two, we're going to be looking at how to package irresistible offers that convey the promise of something your target client really wants. Have you ever put a website or sales page together, even created a new service or program and just heard crickets? Well, more often than not, it's not that what you offer isn't great. It's not a quality or even a capability problem. It's that you're not communicating clearly enough how it aligns with their need, exactly how it can change the problem or situation they're facing. I've talked before about the customer journey and what I call a kind of client dating process. There are different skills of thought on whether having a lot of low-end products works for a high-end consulting or coaching business, but it doesn't hurt or create too much work to put at least one stepping stone between your first date and your marriage proposal. Randy Shattuck, founder of the Shattuck Group management consulting firm, talks about the nature of selling professional services as being all about the promise. 
The first step in growing a service firm is getting clarity around your promise. It should be attractive to your ideal client and speak to what matters to them. So let's talk a little bit about promise, the the pleasure principle of pricing, if you like. Promise is a lot to do with branding and from there, a lot to do with pricing. And this is explained really well in an article titled Price and Pleasure from brand strategy consultancy, the Tronvig Group. There's a link in the show notes, um, but let me summarize it here. There's a school of thought, well, actually, it's human psychology, that says paying more for something makes us feel good. And when something's expensive, we tend to be more likely to take a liking to it. The high price sets off our pleasure senses in the brain. And in the absence of genuine expertise in judging quality, price is a shorthand to our perceived value or quality. Behaviour experiments back this up. What's interesting is that if you're like most people, you'll be happier with your purchase if you spend the extra money. In fact, our belief or perception that high price equals high quality is also highly influential, even in the presence of expertise. When you buy an expensive piece of clothing or a bottle of wine, we make it so in our mind, even if the experience ends up not so great. I've never really understood what that's about, but perhaps we'd rather justify the purchase than, um, you know, in our minds than beat ourselves up about spending all that money. So customer perceived value is just as important from a marketing and sales point of view as actual value. The figure we come up with on paper to justify the price we charge. And most consultants and coaches continue to undercharge for the value they provide anyhow. And certainly they don't add a profit layer that pushes up against the customer perceived value phenomenon. I've found this very, very common in our industry. Professional service providers generally undercharge and certainly don't wish to overcharge. And I'm talking here really about independent consultants rather than some of the big uh, firms. What's really interesting, though, is this. A client will be much more likely to get the result you promise, to get the promise, when they've paid more money. I've experienced this myself and with my own clients. And as the author of that article, James Heaton, concluded, and I quote, the lesson is clear. If you can deliver on a brand promise, you should charge full freight for it, or you'll find your delivered value underappreciated. When people pay less, and particularly if they get something for free, they either don't value it as they should, or they don't act on it. If that's a free resource or a $97 course, you find people may take you up on the offer, but they don't use it or commit to implementing it, and therefore they don't get a result from it. And so it comes across actually as having a low quality, and that backfires on both them and you in the long run. So please charge what you're worth, plus a bit extra. And then if you want to go the extra mile once they're a client, you can do. When you buy a high ticket product or program or service, you tend to commit to it. And assuming that the provider delivers on the promise of value, your experience in its value is then both perceived and actual. So let's talk about delivering your promise with a results orientated program. It's really important that the result is super clear, that people really understand what the outcome is and why it should be important to them, how it resonates with the conversation that's going on in their head. And when you put your offer out and don't attract more clients, that is, you get few or no sales, it can be that the value isn't clear or that the sales process is ineffective. Are you getting people on a call and not closing or are you just not getting calls booked in? Sometimes it's in our own mindset and anxiety that gets in the way when we just don't like to feel pushy or you just don't invite people in a way that sounds of value because we're underplaying, you know, just how great our program is. And a lot of consulting or coaching is just too open-ended Clients don't see where the value is, so they they just compare your daily or hourly rate to others in your industry. Now, an irresistible offer is an offer that's a no-brainer for your ideal prospective customer to buy. It matches exactly what they want to achieve. Now, when you can craft a results-orientated offer and match it to the specific things your perfect people struggle with or want to achieve, the value becomes much more transparent, more tangible to the customer. 
and a structured sales process, be that a sales page or a consultative conversation, will help you draw out exactly what the thing they want to achieve looks and feels like to them. So you can get your messaging right, use the language your customers use so it resonates. Only when you've explored their pain points, if you like, can you start to help them see the possibility of what your offer can achieve and whether it's a good fit for their specific situation. Most consultants, and indeed many consulting firms, apply largely undefined service offerings to a broad market rather than highly targeted messages that align with the specific problems of an ideal clientele as a segment of the wider market. It's quite astonishing the number of experts who struggle to articulate clearly the specific problems they help people solve or the benefits of their service. They talk about how experienced they are in the field. They offer up all manner of accolades and case studies, but many have no clear offer. On top of this, most do not have a clear process for what they do or an effective platform for promoting and selling what they do. So not only are they unsure or unclear in communicating the value they bring to the work, there's no structure or system in place for engaging prospects, marketing if you like, signing them up, sales, or when working with a client, delivery. Sadly, the result is that many consultants and coaches end up at the mercy of their clients' whims, taking on less than ideal work rather than being leaders or in-demand experts in their field. A lot of people nowadays float the concept and structure of a new program or service and even get people to sign up for it and pay for it before it's even live. That way, you can test out the level of interest and tweak your sales copy during a launch phase. If you keep the content insightful and the dialogue helpful during this launch period through an email follow-up series or social media group, you can continue to provide value, develop the relationship and attract further interest. You'd be surprised how many people will readily pay $500 for a workshop or even $2,500 for an online course, yet aren't ready to invest $5,000 on your high-end consulting or coaching program. And of course, some people will never buy. They just like to date, but nothing serious. So let's take this concept a little bit further and talk about growing your customer base through a value ladder. As people engage with your material, the content you share, they'll be deciding whether or not you're right for them or not. But not every potential client will be ready, willing or able to pay for your high end consulting or coaching, even if they're convinced that you can help them achieve results. So while the offer may be attractive and appeal conceptually, the price may actually still be putting people off. And this is where developing educational products at different price points comes into play. It's not so much about price as about whether or not they're ready to invest in you as the solution provider, whether there's that trust there. So there's a relationship between demand, price and quantity, where people will buy a given quantity at a given price. There's a graph I'll put in the show notes for reference, also in my book. When you stack up low to high cost products, the demand increases, as does the quantity of sales, according to people's willingness to pay. So creating products at different price points is not just a revenue strategy. It's a great way to grow your customer base as people move through your material and get to know, like and trust you. The point is this. If you have only one offer, whether it's a product or a service, that's at a high price point, you're not leveraging yourself enough. You're missing out on serving all the potential people who are willing to pay for your help, but only ready to invest initially, at least, in a product at a lower price point. Typically, only a segment of your potential market will buy high-priced consulting or coaching services. And even if they love your staff, it's just that they're just not that kind of client. And that means a a lot of the potential demand for what you help people with is going to go to waste. And that's people you're not serving unless you have other low cost options. Now, this is where a diversified product strategy provides greater leverage. And I go into this more in chapter six of my book, which focuses on leverage delivery. When you add free or low priced options, a free weekly article, a podcast, a book, a course, you're going to serve more people and ultimately increase uptake of your high-end offer. And this is all part of what we call the customer journey. So what are the natural steps for people to move through your engage, educate and enrolling process so that they take 
mini steps rather than one big step and one big leap of faith with you. And this leads to the concept of lifetime customer value. So, I mean, depending on the volume of sales and the rate that they convert to higher price points, you could end up making quite a tidy profit. It could be a steady trickle or a gushing stream of additional income. Everything in your mix is mutually reinforcing across the customer journey. It's a funnel into the next funnel and essentially an upsell to continue learning from you and working with you and getting results. The logic is that if someone likes your free stuff and it helps them with the first step forward, they're more likely to buy your entry-level course. And if they find that valuable and it helps them, they're more likely to buy a premium product like an online group program or live event or take up one of your high-end one-to-one services. And this is what's known as a value ladder. And it's often deemed the most effective way to nurture prospects towards a high-end commitment. And now, not all business strategists agree that a value ladder with multiple products at increasing price points is necessary or even a good idea. Some advocate keeping things very simple, a free training webinar that generates leads and offers a high-end program on the back end, a one-step funnel. Personally, I advise somewhere in between three steps, a lead magnet giveaway, one low-cost option, and a high-ticket service or program. And this is because until you're certain of your conversions from clicks to paying clients, a low-cost front-end product can help fund paid advertising to drive traffic to your sales page and into your funnel. It's what we call a self-funding funnel. Now, regardless of whether it's a free or paid product, one thing's clear. Education products that deliver a clear result to the customer make great business tools. They can help you build your audience, grow your email list, showcase your visible value, as I talked about last week, and increase revenue from the sales generated across your entire offer matrix. Entry-level products are a great precursor to your work with clients and a very persuasive demonstration of your expertise in helping them. In the B2B world, business to business, most often we don't run lead generation with sales funnels. Your contacts are unlikely to come from a lead magnet or low-cost entry product. We tend to use more of an outreach strategy. Because you're selling into an organization, your sales process is going to be much longer and usually you're going to need to get on the phone with people. First, you've got to find the right person to speak to about your program or service in terms of their role and department in the company. And they've got to elicit their needs or provide some value to engage their interests, such as a round table, a research report or a webinar or workshop. So it's kind of a lead magnet, but it's more participatory. However, what we're finding, in fact, is that a diagnostic or assessment works really well as a front end offer. There are several online quizzes or survey tools that you can use to ask questions that as a consultant or coach, you typically want to ask a new client either before or just after they sign up with you. For you, it's great market research and gets you more responsive prospects into your value ladder to start the relationship with you. In answering the questions, they help you take the temperature on the market environment whilst also showing any segmentation. And you're able to provide a key individual with some clarity and guidance that's super focused and relevant because it's based on their answers. And that's a great step towards following up with them to book a call. So once you've got a sense of what it is that your ideal client needs, how do you turn that into a product or an offer? So what we call productizing your value proposition. Creating an offer that aligns your expertise with what your perfect clientele want is, I believe, the most crucial element of marketing success for independent consultants and coaches. A business's success depends on good ideas, authenticity, connection and results. I talk about this a lot. And a positive brand is based on value that ignites enthusiasm and drives all your profits. And this isn't something you should leave to chance or expect to build without careful consideration and planning. Most recognized experts achieved success less from doing their job well and more from putting new insights together from disparate ideas presented in novel and meaningful ways. From my first modest signature program, which was called Mindset Marketing and Money Breakthroughs, I've stood for helping people bridge their performance gaps to break through barriers to success. It's where the iSuccess came from in the iSuccess Business Academy. 
Now, you can't do this kind of work and deliver results with information alone, which is why coaching and mentoring has always been a big part of my courses. Good educational design is critical to how I deliver value, and it's what I'd aspire to become slightly famous for. Work out how your expertise can help someone do something better, because people don't improve by knowing more, they improve by doing things better. People attach value to things that affect them emotionally too. If there's no way for them to place what you offer into their understanding of the problem they have, it won't seem relevant or it won't resonate with them, which means they won't value it, which means they won't buy it. Because your system or your way of using a standard methodology is unique to you, you can package it as a distinct and branded product or program and importantly, price it according to the value to your client of the result you deliver. Let's talk a little bit about understanding how value is created in business. Because the financial folks will tell you that value is created when a business earns revenue that exceeds expenses. Standard definition. But as I've talked about earlier, in relation to value for money, I believe that for a service-based business, we need a broader definition of value creation that can be considered as separate from monetary measures. If you want to make more money, serve more people and have a bigger impact, you need to find a way to leverage your expertise and create more value in the marketplace. Educational products and programs are an obvious add-on to what you already do as an expert and service provider, and it creates value to your consulting and coaching clients. It has to be said that a lot of business owners invest time and money creating products or courses no one wants to buy. This is usually because they didn't do their market research homework or test out the idea before going full steam ahead. And either their price point doesn't fit their target market and they can't charge the prices they expected or they aren't communicating the value effectively in their marketing and sales calls. As an educational entrepreneur, your value is measured through the results you deliver and the satisfaction of your clients. Influence and impact precede income, always. While sales-based marketing is about telling people how great you are at helping people solve a problem, education-based marketing can show them how valuable you are by actually helping them. Achieving learning outcomes is what education is or should be all about. It's about supporting people to not just know more, but implement and achieve the results they want. That's the value that they're paying for. Let's turn now to packaging your value. Creating a packaged product or program is one of the best ways to acquire clients who otherwise couldn't work with you. If you only offer face-to-face and one-on-one, they may not be in a position geographically or financially to use your consulting or coaching services. Let me explain what I mean by a package. A package is something you offer that's not based on how many hours or days you provide. It could be a bundle of resources and tools, a structured set of sessions, or a six-month group program. It could be a purely digital product or course, or it could blend digital resources, virtual sessions, and one-to-one time. What you choose depends on your business, your niche, your skill set and your preferences. However, what is critical to creating a great package that people actually want to buy is that it's based on value, not hours. It focuses on solving a specific problem, delivering a tangible result, and it has a defined start and end. The modalities you choose is really about how you get people from A to B. Even a premium packaged program that ends up being the same cost to your client as your high-end consulting or coaching services can feel like a more attractive proposition. Dialogue is the cornerstone of effective learning and can make your program more engaging, experiential and outcomes focused and thus increasingly high value and premium. If your only offer is a consulting or coaching one-to-one arrangement, people can be put off because it's hard to budget for something like that. To all intents and purposes, it's open-ended and vague. People may feel that there's no guarantee how long it will take to achieve your intended goal. One high-value signature program promoted through one great webinar is a simple strategy that can turn your business success around. And the reason a webinar works so well is it helps you to build trust with your potential clients. When you use this kind of value-driven path in your marketing, you build and nurture a trusted relationship with your target audience from the outset. 
You become a beacon for integrity and a magnet for new clients. And as I covered in last week's episode, there's perceived value, your front-end marketing or promise, which gets your foot in the door, starts the engagement and converts prospects to clients. Real value is the outcome you deliver on the back end, your paid products, programs and services, and what keeps your clients coming back. The truth is nowadays you can create amazing online marketing profiles and clever funnels, but if you can't persuade people to buy your thing, then it's a waste of time, energy and money. It's not actually even about how good your product, program or service is. The crucial part is how well you can communicate its value and the benefits and impact to your ideal customer. I love this quote by Randy Shattuck, CEO of another consulting company I follow. He said, most service organizations build their promise based on their capabilities rather than on the goals, opportunities and challenges of ideal clients. Makes you think, right? How many businesses have you seen that do just that? Are you one of them? So instead of falling into that trap or feeling like you're somehow inflating your prices, how about if we mix up the notion of perceived and real value? What if we give some real value for free on the front end by providing great educational content or support that helps your potential clients solve the first part of a problem that they have? Do you think that might draw the right people in and make them want to work with you as opposed to someone who shares only perceived value through a fancy marketing website? What I often have with with clients that I support is um, that you put out a piece with a call to action that isn't buy now, it's book a call. Because communicating value in your sales conversations is an awful lot more effective than trying to do it through a narrative. Admittedly, it really depends on what you are selling. If you're selling widgets, then I think it's a different matter. But when you're selling professional services um, or a group program, what have you packaged it into? Communicating value through a consultative conversation is just um, the way that you would normally go about your work. So as I said, I covered this in an episode a little while ago around consultative sales. And it should really fit with who you are as a professional and not feel like selling. Um, But at the end of the day, clarity, relevance and value for money, the things we've been talking about, are really great primers for sales. As I mentioned, most sales material for consulting type services just doesn't work, you know, because it tends to focus on the services offered, not on what the outcome or benefit that's delivered is, specifically as a result of working with you. Now, it's hard to convey value when you're only talking about delivering X number of days or a 30-page report. As an aside, this is probably why many project teams find evaluation so challenging. While they may be focused on the project's aims and objectives, they tend to write these out as activities and outputs rather than outcomes. That is, the gains, the benefits, the impact on their key stakeholders, in our case, our clients, and in fact, their customers, if that's appropriate. And as a golden rule in sales and marketing, we want to talk about results and benefits, not facts or features of your service or product. Your sales copy should be focused on addressing three critical return on investment questions people will have about your offer. Number one, what's the opportunity that will change or improve things for the client? Number two, can we trust you to deliver it? And number three, is that benefit worth the fee? In other words, what's the outcome, benefits and impact from working with you? Your prospect wants to know how much bang they're going to get for their buck in terms of outcomes. Quality or quantity are secondary concerns. Surprisingly, most consultants aren't too good at articulating the end outcomes they achieve for their clients. Their sales material tends to focus on the means to the end, their process, their way of doing things, their methodology. And that's important, but it's not really what the focus is when someone's first looking to see whether or not you can help them. At the same time, sometimes it's so hard to find what's the end result because we know consultants and coaches tackle complex problems and clients are unlikely to believe there's a single nugget of wisdom or know-how that they're missing that's going to turn everything around. In fact, suggesting there's some kind of silver bullet solution to tackle a complex issue is likely to diminish your credibility as an expert. But they usually like the concept of a collaborative, co-designed process to help them review, analyze, and plan the solution. 
This is why your consulting or coaching methodology is an important element of how you deliver the intended outcome or result for your client. As we discussed in the previous episode, when you leverage your expertise through education-driven marketing, when you really have a clear value proposition and you make sure that that's visible in the marketplace, what you're doing is showcasing your understanding of the problem and your process to resolving it. A good enrollment conversation gives relief, hope and incentive that the full solution is within reach. You need to provide the prospect with a lot of value without giving too much away. It's most definitely not about delivering one big sales pitch. Enrollment should be a positive experience for your prospects. Don't focus on making a sale and getting clients signed up. Focus on getting consult sessions booked in. A good consult is where you help the person see what's been holding them back. The gift is one of clarity. They no longer feel stuck and they've been given the next steps to take. The call should make the solution feel within their reach, and your only pitch is to ask, do you want some help in implementing that? At the end of the enrollment call, you'll either have a new client or you won't. Perhaps it's a no, but not a never. It may well be that the timing's not quite right for them, or maybe they just that they don't feel your program is the right solution for them, and you may reach that view um, together. So in this case, there's gonna, they're going to stay a subscriber and maybe a follower, and they're going to go through maybe another cycle of the engage, educate, enroll process, perhaps in a different segment if the call revealed your program isn't quite right for them, but there might be something else that you can offer them that would be a fit. And the good news is that when you create a sales funnel, alongside good follow-up by email or phone, education-based marketing does much of the trust building and selling for you. This means when you get on a call with the prospect, they're already half on board with you. Go into the call with the mindset, see if you can help the person. And if you can, you can tell them about your program as a vehicle for getting them the help they need. The trick is to help them get clarity on exactly how they can achieve a specific result they desperately desire. You can let your material do most of the problem explanation and trust building for you, which means you end up only doing one-to-one calls with highly engaged applicants. I have an application process for that reason alone, and it gives me a little bit of information about the person before I get on the phone with them. And in that case, when you're on the phone, you can shift from selling to helping. So they get value and they see you as a way to procure the solution to their problem. And this works whether or not it's B2B or B2C directly to the customer. If you're working with an organization, you're also having some kind of dialogue, some conversation about whether or not you can help them. People who have gone through this incentive education with you make ideal clients and good candidates for your high-end products, programs and services. Okay, so I'd like to just take this point to summarize where we've got to. Uh, We started out at looking at how to align your offer with a clear value proposition to match what you deliver with what your ideal client wants to achieve. Sounds logical, doesn't it? But often we start from what we can do and look for a buyer rather than starting from the buyer's needs and package an offer that fits that purpose, audience and outcome. I've also given you some insights around pricing, how to structure your pricing and how to create value by communicating the benefits to the client talking about the outcome, the impact of achieving the result they want and what that's worth to them. We've tackled ideas around creating a value ladder that provides a bridge as you create the trust relationship with a new client so they experience how you help them and feel confident to make a bigger commitment with you. We've looked at different ways to productize what you do to create a clear and tangible pathway for your clients to follow, which may be one or more modalities, self-directed, group-based or one-to-one. The blend depends on the level of input and interaction needed to achieve the promise of your offer. And we looked at the sales process for how your client buys the packaged offer, a product, program or service, and ways to build trust through your consultative conversation. A business stuck in the old paradigm clings to marketing approaches is focused on advertising and sales meetings that presents what they do and not engagement with who they're doing it for. So finally, I'd like to come full circle back to the ideas around visibility, credibility and engaging a global audience with your irresistible offer. 
despite the tremendous opportunities of the internet and social media for communicating our value and what we stand for, many of us are blind to the opportunities of global reach through digital delivery. Top performing service providers, agencies and firms can demonstrate their value by educating their audience and building an authority platform, a digital presence such as a website or media channel. And when people search for a specific issue, need or problem, your branded sites and content should come up in the results. In today's crowded marketplace where consultants and coaches are abundant commodities, it's a little challenging. So here are three principles to reiterate why sharing high value educational content around a core concept for what your clients struggle with is a powerful strategy to stand out and get noticed by the people you want to attract. Principle number one is education trumps information. Research shows that information alone does not help someone learn and understand or foster the kind of shifts in beliefs or behaviours necessary for transformative change to happen. Blasting out expert content alone will not lead automatically to enrolling clients. In fact, it's making us all feel rather overwhelmed. But a well-structured, guided path offers an excellent and refreshing solution for your prospects and a first step for building a relationship. Principle number two, dialogue is empowering. It's crucial you understand your potential clients or customers, that you vary your message and mechanism to suit their preferences and the experiential learning they need. Group programs enable clients to apply what they're learning in their own context. And that's another reason why they're so powerful. I talked about group programs in previous episodes. This dialogue is an inherent part of any good development program, whether it's personal development, professional development, spiritual development, health or business. You make yourself available to support them through any questions that come up, but you can also harness the wisdom of others and provide a vital facilitation for group masterminding. Principle number three, needless complexity is a repellent. Offering an array of services can serve to confuse. Often, less is more. Make sure the thing you help people with is super clear, that you can explain it easily to someone who doesn't know you, as well as someone in your technical field. Complexity can also happen when you spread yourself thin across multiple platforms, doing too many things, rather than owning one particular space. Having one main digital platform you show up in consistently will provide a strong entry point to everything else you do. And having one high-end signature program or service that really plays to your strengths means you can focus your marketing on one clear high-end value proposition, one core offer that's the flagship of your business. You build confidence and trust in the minds of your buyers and so attract more clients to work with you when you have a clear path to success through your value ladder, no matter how many steps you end up building into it. And that's it for leveraging your value proposition. Has it been helpful? I'd love to hear your thoughts or if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me at jallison.com. And next week, I have a very special guest for you. It's one of my clients and a great friend of mine, Dr. Monique White-Wells, and she's the CEO and founder of the Wells International Foundation, a non-profit organization, and she's actually based in Paris, but she's an American, and we just had such a great conversation. We talked a lot about leadership and lifestyle and legacy and energy and productivity and just that whole work-life balance, which is what my podcast here is all about. So I can't wait for you to hear that and interview that conversation. It was just so amazing. So chat out for now. Thank you for listening to the Leverage Business Podcast. Want to create leverage in your business? Did this episode provide some insights and ideas to be thinking through? If so, subscribe so you get alerts when the next one's released. If you want to learn more or would like help and support with building a leveraged business that achieves true freedom for you, then head over to jallison.com forward slash podcast to find all the resources and links that go with this show on my website and to join our iSuccess community. And if you're enjoying our content, it would be great if you could pop into Apple Podcasts or the app you listen from and leave me a rating and review. Everyone makes a difference to improving our rankings. So thank you if you've done that already. I appreciate you. 
So hey, that's it. Thank you for listening. I hope you've loved this episode and have some great takeaways to be thinking through. I wish you a pleasant, productive and profitable week. And I'll see you again next time for another episode of the Leverage Business Podcast.